Hello, everybody, and hello, Shana. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm okay. Great. Good. Yeah, yeah. It's been it's been uh, it's been fun here. I'm juggling juggling three streams. So, <laughs> so um, welcome back, everybody, to the West Virginia Game Devel Game Developers Expo, uh, and welcome back, Shana Moon, because Shana was actually our keynote, I believe, in 2000. So, 2018. 18. Yeah, 2018. Just two yeah. years ago. Because Justin was the year before, and that's how we that's how we pulled you in. So <laughs> thank you so much for coming back and doing a talk. And this talk is going to be very, very timely, uh, but also a nice compare and contrast because just yesterday, uh, if, if everybody out there has not seen Jeremy Doolin, uh, who was an independent game developer, actually to talk about how um, COVID has affected his creativity and, and his strive to keep on going on. And now Shane's going to talk to us about how COVID has actually affected the games industry. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to you, Shana, so you can go ahead and get started. And I'll, I'll share your stuff here. And there we go. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, thanks again so much for having me here. Um, I had a really fantastic experience getting to, to fly over uh, to Huntington in 2018. And I'm really, really, really glad that things were able to work out that I'm able to speak to you remotely today. Um, so today, as Patrick said, I'm going to be talking about COVID-19 and how it's impacted the games industry. Um, for you, those of you who don't know, my name is Shana Moon, um, and I'm currently a senior technical project manager uh, for Unity Technologies. Um, and if you don't know Unity, Unity is a company that makes the Unity engine, um, which is one of the most popular real-time uh, environment uh, game engines in the world. Um, if you play any mobile games, uh, there's a very good chance uh, it was made with Unity. So let's get started. So very quickly, I, again, I'm happy to say that I'm back. Uh, I spoke in 2018 about my journey into the games industry and kind of how I had gotten to where I was. Um, and just to quickly recap that, I went to college at Fair State University in Grand Rapids, Michigan for digital animation and game design. Uh, after that, I started my games career as a QA tester at a studio in Kalamazoo, Michigan called S2 Games. Uh, I worked in IT for a year, I went down to Austin for a year, and then I got my job at Santa Monica Studio, where I worked as a producer on God of War, uh, which came out in 2018. After that, I worked on the upcoming God of War game that was recently announced uh, by Sony that is tentatively slated to come out next year, so I'm excited for, for everybody to get to experience that. Um, and now I work for Unity, which, as I said, is a game engine company. And basically what I do on a day-to-day -day basis is I work with engineers and I try to get them what they need to be successful with what they're trying to do. Um, I, as a producer, my job is really to help out the developers that I work with. Um, I facilitate a lot of communication. I schedule a lot of meetings and spend a lot of time looking at people's calendars. But more than that, what my job is, to, is to really be a multiplier on the developers that I work with so that they're able to focus on the individual work that they're doing. And then I um, really just like work to get all of the stuff out of the way that makes their lives harder. And really like one of the best things that I can do is anticipate a problem before it comes up and then uh, just try to take care of it before, before they even know about it. Um, so as you can imagine, there have been some changes this year. Uh, I know I gave this like very professional headshot to Patrick for this event. Uh, so you may have been accepting the, the Shayna on the left, uh, but today you're getting the perspective, uh, more from the Shayna on the right, because, uh, my life has changed significantly since, uh, COVID-19 has come up and I've been working from home and all this stuff. Um, in the picture, you also see my my two little foster kittens who are who are currently with me. Their names are Socks and Springs, and um, they're like one of the best parts of my life and my day. So I thought I would share them. <laughs> um, so the things that I'm going to talk about today, um, I'm going to just talk about kind of my personal experience, um, kind of over the last six or seven months. I'm going to talk about how day to day life at work has changed. And then I'm also going to talk about how hiring has changed um, in the games industry, because I think that that's, that's one topic that uh, we've seen a lot of 
different things happen. Uh, and I'm very interested in kind of talking about those with you and kind of explaining like how potentially that can really help out people who um, are coming from areas where the games industry isn't necessarily centralized. So we'll talk about all these things uh, today. And I'm, I'm excited to get to it. So like I said, my life has changed a lot this year. Um, one of the biggest things is that I actually lost my job at the beginning of March this year. That was really, really difficult. And I, you know, I'm not going to kind of sugarcoat it. I'm going to say like, it, it was one of the most difficult things that I've had to deal with in my life. And I kind of, that was at the beginning of March. And then a couple weeks later, Los Angeles, which is where I live, um, went into, co uh, went into COVID-19 uh, lockdown and quarantine. And so everything felt very unstable. Everything felt very unusual. I wasn't sure where I was going to land in my career. I wasn't sure if the games industry was even going to be continuing to hire in that environment or if people were going to sort of lock down and and do with what they ha deal with what they had already and you know not try to bring more people in so it was really scary and i will say that one of the things that i talked about in my keynote for this event a couple of years ago is having a network of people in the games industry to support you and how important that is. And I will say for sure that the people that I had friendships with and relationships with in the games industry, those people were absolutely critical um, to me for getting my, my new job. Uh, I actually was referred to the role that I currently have by a friend of mine who, who works at Unity. So those personal relationships where you have like care and trust for one another, they are more important than ever while we're all kind of going through this intense, uh, intense amount of stress that has come with, with COVID. And another factor that, that has made things very stressful is my distance from my family. So my family lives in Michigan. Um, my mom was actually, actually visited me towards the end of February, but I have not seen her since then. And I have not seen any of my family members since then. And that has really been a, a big psychological strain. You know, we, as humans, we are social creatures we we want our families we we love our families whether those are are you know our biological families or our found families um and not having the ability to you know you know go and visit has has really been tough um and it's very likely that i actually will not see them this year so um again the friends that i have here in LA that I have made over the years of, of working in the games industry here, those people have, have absolutely saved my life. And there's so many things that I have experienced with them remotely and, and over Discord and all different ki kinds of social interaction. I know for the, the first month that Animal Crossing was out, we were playing every single night and that was really kind of helping to keep my head on straight um, as we were kind of going through uh, quarantine and lockdown together. Uh, and, and overall, I know that I'm talking, I'm, I'm starting out by talking a lot of kind of personal and psychological things um, when it comes to my experience with COVID. And I think that's because honestly, we're currently experiencing a time of collective stress and trauma, and we can't ignore that. Like that impacts our lives and impacts our industry and our work. Because at the end of the day, all industries are made up of people. And when you're in a time where people are really going through a lot, that is going to have an impact on the industries as well. So I think it's important that not just in the context of COVID, but also in the context of things like working long hours, or you know, job stability, things like that, to talk about our feelings and our personal experiences and the relationships that we have, because 
it's such a huge factor. And as a, as a producer and a project manager, my whole job is interacting with people and understanding people and understanding what they're going through. And being that type of person and having that type of role in the games industry, it, it has made things really, really tough because at, at any given moment, you are so hyper aware of what everyone is going through. And because things are so difficult, you also feel the need to reach out and you kind of end up getting into this, this kind of dual existence where on the one hand, you have your job and you like your job and you love your job and you got into the games industry because you love making games and you want to do the best job possible. But then on the other side, you know, so many people are dealing with so many things right now and you have no idea when you talk to somebody, you know, from day to day, from hour to hour, what they might be dealing with. Um, And for me, as a person who works with people, like that has not only like impacted my ability to do my job, but it's also really hit me hard emotionally. Um, I, I want to care for people and I want to help everybody. And especially when there's so much going on, you just, you just can't. So it is, it has been really tough. And, you know, if, if you have been feeling really bad, like you are not alone. Um, And I think sometimes in the games industry, um, you know, we can kind of seem removed from real people and we can kind of seem like we're just having a great time and we're making video games and it's all chill, but everybody's going through it. It is, it is really tough. Um, And kind of leading from that, one thing that, that has impacted me really hard. And I know a lot of, a lot of my, my good friends who are also part of the industry, this has hit them as well. um, Is this notion that success in 2020 and success in this time of, again, kind of like this collective stress that we're all going throwing through. Um, success is just not going to look like what it would have looked like last year. Um, I had a lot of plans for this year. I, I was super honored to have been named to the Forbes 30 under 30 list for games uh, for 2020. And that was such an exciting thing to happen for me last year. And I was really into the idea of going to places and speaking and going to events and, you know, getting, getting to meet people like you all in person and things like that. And all of that just kind of went away. There, there have been some things, um, obviously I'm doing this right now today and that's really great. I'm already having a good time and I'm looking forward to, uh, to all your questions, but, um, it's just different. And there's a part of me that feels like, oh, I haven't gotten up on a stage and talked to a bunch of people about video games. Like, what is wrong with me? Like, (laughs) why am I not succeeding? Why am I not doing the things I wanted to do? And, you know, there's tons of stuff that just my capacity to do extra things outside of work has diminished so much. I I get to the end of a work day and I am so tired. I feel like I've spe- expended so much energy that the idea of like writing an article about game production or like going and doing a talk or something like oh man, it it can feel impossible. There are there are days um where you know, I get to the end of the work day and I feel like I just stare at a wall for 40 minutes and then the time is just gone and I'm like ready to go to bed. Like that is a real thing that happens. Like this is a tiring time. So I, I have done a lot of things to kind of try to introduce new forms and new definitions of success uh, into my life that I think are really helping with kind of processing the mental strain of of what's been going on. Uh, I have a picture up here of this uh, 10-day habit maker, which I'll have a link to it at the end of this talk. Um, And basically, it's this extremely simple tracker where you write a little smiley face down for little things that that you do day to day. And it's super low pressure and it's super cute. And mine currently literally just says, 
think something nice about yourself. So, you know, it it's such a basic thing and it could seem really easy, but like when you're under so much stress, just having that little thing to hang on to is really helpful and really important. And, um, you know, I mentioned my kittens earlier. I've been doing uh, kitten fostering for the last two months, and they really cut into those sort of gray periods of time and periods of time when I'm just not getting anything done and it's just not clicking. Um, You know, I go in there, I hang out with them, I feed them, I clean up after them and just taking my mind off of, of things is, is really helpful too. Um, I, I have had to work really hard to make sure that I'm taking care of my, myself and my body. And, um, you know, it can be really easy to kind of slip into things like, you know, I'm not going into an office. And so, you know, I'm staying up really late at night and waking up really late and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, keeping routines has been really good for my my mental health, keeping track of things, um, and also just like generally trying to to do things that are different. You'll notice that my hair is currently a million colors. Uh, I shaved my head a couple months ago, and now I've been dyeing my hair all kinds of crazy colors. And like, it seems frivolous, but it's really easy to let go of those frivolous things when you're under a lot of stress. Um, so I just encourage all of you to to understand that like people in the games industry are people. We are going through so much right now. A lot of people have experienced a lot of upheaval. And my experience has been that generally the people that I work with, you know, they understand that the stuff that they're going through is stuff that everybody's going through. So, you know, there's a I've seen a lot of empathy and a lot of sympathy and a lot of like really touching moments of people that I work with and people across the industry coming together and supporting each other. So everybody's going through this differently. Some people need more help than others. And and as an industry, like making really good um, connections with other people has been super vital to to me continuing to stay a sane human being in this environment. And you you could say, you know, oh, well, I'm not in the games industry. And I want to be in the games industry. How How can I develop those kinds of relationships? And I would say, look to your classmates, look to people in your classes, people in other, in other states at other schools who you've met through events like this, keep in contact with them. You know, every person that you meet in the games industry is not going to be someone who's going to like hand you a job in a little like present with, with a nice neatly tied bow, but having those friendships with the people that you're kind of coming up with is really, really vital because you can be their advocates and they can be your advocates. And that gives both of you like so much more of an advantage, uh, in the games industry. So, uh, so yeah, that my life has changed significantly. Um, I'm under a lot of stress all the time, but it has really been kind of getting down to basics, being kind to myself, reaching out when I need help and continuing to maintain those friendships um, that has helped me to continue to be successful just in the face of how much uh, stuff has changed. So let's talk about kind of the, let's, we're going to shift gears a little bit. And I want to talk about kind of the ways that my day-to-day life at work has changed. So With Unity, uh, with this new job, I am 100% remote at all times. I work completely from inside my apartment, where I am right now. Um, I'm coming to you speaking from a computer that the company I work with provided. Um, Everything's online. Everything's on this computer. Um, So in the morning, uh, I well, actually, my day starts the night before because I need to look at my schedule because my one of the things that's kind of really different about work now is that because I'm not going into an office, my hours are a lot less regular. So every night before I am going to have a day of work, I go and I check my calendar and I actually have to check and see when my day is actually going to start because my day can start as early as 7am if I have a meeting with a uh, 
another team that's in another country or time zone. Um, and it can start as late as like 10 a.m. because 10 a.m. is when I have a regular morning um, remote stand up with the team that I work with. Um, and having meetings remotely is, is pretty much what everybody in the games industry is doing right now. Um, my personal experience has been that we're using Zoom calls and we're doing video calls, um, kind of like what we're doing right now. Like this is an environment that I'm very comfortable with. Um, and every day I'm talking to um, some of the same people, but also I'm talking to new people from different departments at Unity um, and it's all remote. And, you know, going through a, a remote meeting and an in-person meeting are, are pretty different. Um, it feels a lot more formal. I think at, at a game studio, when you're working with people that you're physically around all the time, um, things are not necessarily so formal, but when you kind of bring the element of being on camera and everything has to be very, very specifically scheduled because, you know, we have to make sure that we set up the, the Zoom call and make all that stuff happen. Uh, it feels a lot more formal because one thing that, that can happen when you're working at a game studio or working at a tech company or working at any company really is, you know, you, you kind of have like chatter back and forth. Um, ideas may come up. You may say, hey, let's go get like, let's go get like Cheryl and uh, we'll get somebody else and we'll get these people together and just have a little conversation about this idea. Um, and it doesn't have to be like this specifically planned out thing where like different people's schedules have to be taken into consideration and you have to put it on the calendar and all this stuff. So it, it's just like my, my mornings are a lot of like scheduled meetings with a lot of different people. Um, and then there's just the aspect of paying attention to, to a video call, you know, I'm on a computer. This computer is connected to the internet. There are a thousand distractions. Uh, I also have like my work Slack and the conversations in my work Slack continue while I'm in meetings and there may be something important that comes up in, in the Slack. And all of a sudden I'm kind of trying to split my attention between two things, which if I was working in an office, you know, I might have my laptop with me while I was in an in-person meeting, but when you're in an in-person meeting, if you start like very visibly checking your Slack messages on your laptop, it, it comes across as a little rude. But when you're in a video call, like it's much harder to tell when when a bunch of people are, you know, whatever they may be doing on their computer screen. Um, and so from the meeting participant uh, side, it can be tough. Like also just like talking to people over video calls is weird. Um, doing this presentation for you is weird for me. I am currently sitting. I've never gotten, given a talk while sitting before. Um, I'm in my apartment. My bed is 10 feet away from me. I could just leave right now and go lay down face first on my bed because it's Saturday. Uh, it's Saturday morning in LA. Um, very different environment. Like I've got a plastic unicorn on my desk. It's, I have a million distractions available to me. And so it makes work a lot harder. Um, it makes focusing a lot harder. Um, during meetings, like generally, like in a normal meeting, we take like notes and take action items. And then we're coordinating over things like Slack um, to kind of get things done. Um, you know, and that involves a lot of like checking in with people via, via chats. It involves a lot of sending emails. Um, which you would you would do normally in a in a game studio environment, but just the aspect of like that you're always at one place in your home and you're not like physically in the same room as people, uh, it just kind of puts this barrier up. And and then there's there's the other element of of Zoom. I think they call it Zoom fatigue, but it's like you know video call fatigue, where because I'm a, a project manager, my whole job basically is talking to people. So. I can spend an entire day in Zoom calls and just looking at a camera and trying to sort of make eye contact with and empathize with and convey information to a camera uh, is really tough. And I I don't have like a super concrete list of things, but I'm pretty sure I've, I've definitely changed my approach to speaking in a meeting because of it. I used to be a lot more animated with my hands when I talked, but because 
talking with my hands so that you can see it involves me having to like lift my arms up. I mostly just kind of sit with my arms folded now um, and it can feel kind of limiting. Um, in the afternoon, I'm going to kind of frame this as like how I'm actually doing work. Like when I'm not in meetings and I'm like heads down and just like doing my individual work, how is, how is that different? And of course, that's also impacted by the fact that I'm in my home and there's a million distractions. Um, there's also this element of it is a little bit harder to feel like you're accomplishing anything at work. Like as a project manager, it, it's already a little bit difficult for me to kind of feel this sense of accomplishment because I don't make assets that go into the games that I work on. I make like schedules and I run meetings and things. Um, but there's a big, I would say there's a big difference. Like if I'm working on a document and I send that document to my manager, um, when my manager says like, okay, great, thank you. That feels a lot more fulfilling when it's somebody in a room talking to you as opposed to getting a message over Slack. It, it just feels different just because of like human psychology and the way that, that things work. Um, so how do you counter that? Like the way that I really counter that is just trying to train my brain that like, yes, everything is weird right now. And, and I know, you know, I kind of talked about that aspect of redefining success earlier that applies to my job, like a hundred percent working as a project manager, working as a producer. Um, I always kind of knew or kind of suspected that it would be difficult um, doing it remotely. And I remember having conversations with my good friend, who's also a producer about it and just thinking like, oh man, that would be really tough. Uh, and it is tough. Uh, I've had to get a lot more detailed about taking notes. Um, there's there's a whole kind of IT aspect to this too. Like if uh, if you're currently in school and you're doing school remotely, you know, please uh, thank your IT professionals because I cannot imagine what it has been like for IT people across the country and across the world to try to get everybody into a place where they could learn and work remotely. And then also supporting just like all of the little technical problems that come up. And when it comes to games, um, you know, games are huge and complicated, even when you're in the same building. And um, we use a thing in games and also generally in software development called source control, which is where um, everybody's files go into a folder and then the program that you use for source control has the ability to save out versions. And basically it's a way of protecting the files that people are adding to the project so that, you know, if somebody puts a file in by accident or if somebody takes something out, um, it doesn't just like tank the project for everybody. And having everybody be on source control in a building is already like pretty challenging, but having everybody be on the internet where people can have different internet connections, people can have um, like different computer setups. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people who have gone from like working full time on a desktop PC to working full time on a laptop, and that's a big adjustment. So, IT folks and like those kinds of efforts, like there was a period of like a couple months where IT departments at tech companies and game studios were just working really hard over time just to get people up and running and working on their projects again from like a technical side. Um, and then, uh, you know, I spend a lot of time talking about kind of like the emotional side of, of this, of this kind of thing, but there's also just like, Making games is pretty complicated. There are a lot of different disciplines that not only have to work within their discipline, but also have to work with other disciplines to get things done. And even when things are, you know, quote unquote normal, that's pretty tough. But in in kind of this new remote world, we have to get artists and engineers and designers and sound people and animators and technical artists, we have to get all those people to work together. And there's already kind of a communication barrier there. Um, and with the remote stuff, it's, it's even more difficult. And one of the things that has really been helpful in getting people to be better communicators is not only having them being in like formal meetings with each other, but also deliberately setting aside time for those groups of people to be social with one another. 
Um, if you think about an eight hour day at work, you definitely do not spend 100% of that time working. Um, you have chit chat, you have, you know, going to grab a snack, you have going to grab um, some bathroom time, you know, people take take breaks, just to, like get outside and walk around. Um, and there's a lot of conversations that come up that are relevant to work that that happen in that space. And especially in game development, because game development is a is a creative space, like, people have ideas, people have eureka moments. Um, and so one of the things that that we kind of try to do is, is facilitate that kind of stuff. And um, one of the teams that I work with has been really good about this. They do, um, they do like some gaming nights. Um, one of the folks from my, from a client studio runs like Dungeons and Dragons games with people from the studio. And just like, one of the things that really helps with the communication is having more casual conversations because it builds up a le level of like trust and comfort with each other. And so it makes it easier to talk to each other um, in this kind of weird uh, remote context. Uh, and then the last thing I want to talk about is kind of after work. So I talked about like, hey, my day can begin at kind of weird times. And that's also true about the end of my day because depending on what's going on, generally my day can end between like 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. And it really depends on like what meetings I have, what I have to get done, what has to get done tomorrow, that kind of thing. Um, but one thing that's been really, really critical, and it's something that I encourage people to do as well, is like log off with kind of Slack and having your email and all that stuff. It's very easy to 100% integrate your work into your day-to-day -day life. And that was true before COVID because when you work on something like a video game, like it really does kind of take over all of your thoughts and you're kind of kind of constantly trying to solve the problems that you're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis, whether you're somebody in creative, somebody who's in a technical field or somebody like a producer who's trying to sort of from a very high level understand like, okay, how are we going to get all these teams to collaborate? Um, how are we going to solve this problem? How am I going to encourage this person? And you can really allow those questions to occupy your thoughts 100% of the time. Um, but I don't recommend it because you can really tire yourself out that way one concept that you may have heard before is the concept of burnout. Like burnout is not only like a mental and emotional thing, it is a physical thing. Like you can get completely exhausted. You can feel brain fog. You can just gradually stop feeling like you're able to do the things that you want to do. And we talk a lot in the games industry about minimizing burnout. And especially now with COVID, that's really important because it, it is totally possible when you're working from home to just completely submerge yourself in your work and not come up for air. Um, and one of the things that I do as a project manager is really try to pay attention to what people are doing. And, and you know, if somebody's working until 8 p.m. every night, like maybe encourage them like, hey, maybe you don't need to go to that 7 a.m. meeting or like, hey, maybe this can wait until tomorrow. Um, you really have to look out for people because, you know, we don't have a physical building that people are entering and leaving. So I just try to be really thoughtful about those things and really pay attention to like what's going on with other people. And then for me, it's really critical. Like I do not have my work email on my phone because I constantly check my phone and I'm constantly on my phone. And if I had my work email on my phone, I would go insane. Uh, that's just true because the the temptation to to check it would just be absolutely enormous. So I do stuff like that. Like it's not on my phone. Um, you know, when the work day is done, I log off of my company Slack and I do not check it until the next morning. Uh, that's actually not true. Sometimes I do check it. Um, but I'm working on not doing that because I'm trying to like maintain that work-life boundary, but it's been really tough. Um, and you know, I, this computer is in my home hundred percent of the time. So sometimes it feels like I never leave the office. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, there's so many different things that, that have become different and difficult. Um, 
but yeah, that like physical presence of your job in your home, um, that's been really tough as well. But I think that after, I will say it's not all doom and gloom because I think that, um, so I started at Unity in April and so it's been six or seven months. And I think that now that I'm more familiar with the job, I've, I've gotten a little bit better on kind of like getting into a routine and, and then being able to take that routine and kind of separate it from, from my own life. Um, remote work is really weird. There were already teams in the games industry who fully work remotely. Um, and what they are telling us is what you are doing now is not work from home. What you're doing right now is work from home in the middle of a pandemic. So, you know, as we kind of talk about like the end of the year, next year, potentially going back into the office, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what things we have learned from being out of the office and what we can kind of take back into the office. You know, the way that it's going to work for for me, at least, is that you know, I am not going to go from being 100% work from home to being 100% in an office. There's going to be kind of a gradual slide from remote to physical. And I think it's going to be really interesting to see, like, what things about my work are actually improved from being work from home. Like, I have a lot more control over what I do when I'm taking my lunch break, for instance. Um, so, I'm really interested to see kind of what stuff sticks around from from working remotely. There's a big argument to be made, um, and that kind of goes into the the last topic I want to talk about today, which is um, which is hiring uh, during this pandemic. So hiring is already challenging, like anything else in games. Um, and I could tell you that, as somebody who was looking for a job in March of this year, in April of this year, it was it was a pretty stressful time. I mean, for a lot of reasons, but I was really concerned about like my ability to come across well in interviews because you know there's a certain amount of like personality and and warmth and you know there's a person there's a certain amount of like connection that you're able to do in person and so the prospect of interviewing for a company completely remotely was like pretty scary to me. Um, and all the stuff that I've said today about remote work also applies to remote interviewing. Uh, it is very strange to like be on a video call and be staring into a camera instead of looking at a person's eyes. I will also say that the setup that I have right now for uh, the webcam and everything being in video calls is pretty nice, but I didn't have this when I was interviewing. So um, when I did all my interviews this year, I sat in front of my sliding glass door because that was the best light for my apartment. And I sat on the floor and I had my phone propped up on a stack of books. <laughs> um, I, it's just kind of, you have to make do with what you can, but obviously that was like a weird, a weird feeling and a weird situation. And like, you know, you can't go out to lunch during an interview when you're remote. So that was kind of off the table. Um, lots of lots of different stuff was different. But one thing that I think is really nice about this is that um, it actually kind of opens up the opportunity for people um, in places other than kind of the West and East Coast to come in and, and interview. It, it makes things easier for people who are physically disabled because they all they are able to interview remotely and not kind of deal with like the physical aspect of going somewhere to, to interview. Um, and I, I have generally found that it seems like companies are more open to talking to people from other places because they are starting to learn about you know, how effective the people that work for them um, can really be um, working remotely. And it doesn't really matter where you are physically. Um, just quickly, a remote interview situation is very similar to a regular interview situation. Um, 
basically I spent like five to six hours in video calls answering questions about myself. So the actual interviews themselves have not really changed. There might be some changes. Um, if you're doing like a whiteboard for an engineering interview, like you will have to use a digital whiteboard or you might have to like type something out. Um, it's, it's a little bit different. Um, and then once you're actually hired, I think one thing that people who are being hired into the industry now are experiencing is we are not only interviewing and working remotely, we are onboarding remotely. So I have not met anyone that I work with at Unity in person yet. Uh, and that's weird. And there's a lot of aspects to a game studio or a tech company culture that you get from talking to people in person. And I'm kind of missing that. But if you're working for a place that like understands that everybody is kind of going through it, which Unity has been really great about, um, they have definitely like encouraged me to take my time and and understand things and ask questions. And, you know, as we continue to be working remotely, I know a lot of you may be doing either um, in-person school, but it's probably like a little weird, or you might be doing remote school, like feel free to ask questions, feel free to ask for help, um, you know, make those connections with other people because they're the ones who, who will really see you through. Um, and yeah. So thank you so much for coming to this talk. Um, I'm going to keep up this slide with um, all these links and um, all these kind of things. I have the link for the Habit Maker notepad. Um, I want to emphasize that like I am here as a resource for you. Um, I am still in contact with a couple people who I talked to at the expo a couple of years ago. Um, I'm still in contact with people that I've mentored in other programs. So please reach out on LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, on my personal website, whatever you want. Um, come with, with a question or come with like a topic that you're interested in in mind. Um, but I, I, as somebody who came from the Midwest and entered into the industry, I had a lot of advantages going into wanting to do games. Um, you know, just sort of like financially and also in terms of like my my background and, and the support that I had for my family. And it was still really, really difficult. So I understand how tough it is and how tough it can feel. But there are also a lot of people in the games industry who want to help you and are excited to have you here. So, so please reach out. Um, I know that great game developers can come from anywhere. Um, and I, I really want to talk to you. So uh, thank you again so much for having me here today. Um, and then with whatever time we have left, I'm really excited uh, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Great. Thank you so much, Shana. We do have a question. Awesome. Just here, I, I, Well, I mean, <laughs> well, I, I've been putting it out there. Maybe they were waiting, but, um, <laughs> but I want to, I want to put this up here. I, I dig this. Yeah, Alex Garbus asked, do you think that remote hiring will continue after the pandemic? Hopefully ends. Um, I really hope that it does. It's something that I plan on encouraging. I think that this, like I talked a little bit about kind of the impact that it's that it has potentially on like people who are physically disabled. Um, and like these are kind of accommodations that people have been asking for a while. Um, and now because the pandemic is affecting everyone, those things are kind of happening and people who've been asking them for a long time are saying like, hey, like, can we continue to get this? Because like, this is what we've needed and apparently you actually can do it. Um, so it's something that I will actively continue to encourage, especially because like I've mentioned, like, I'm really into um, encouraging the games industry to bring in people from other places, um, you know, not only other places in the United States, but also in other countries, like some of the best game developers that I've worked with come from, from countries outside the U S. So yeah, I, I really hope that it does. And I think that the results that we see from the way that people are able to work remotely will convince some, if not all companies that like, the remote hiring stuff is viable and like does make for good results. Fantastic. Fantastic. <clears throat> well, we, we have about a 10 second delay out there on, on uh, Twitch and on YouTube. So I am just double checking the chat here to see if, if more come rolling in for us. Just a moment.
but yeah it's been a weird year <laughs> i'm sure it's yeah. been weird for you i'm sure it's been yeah. weird for everybody and then like it seems like the entire world is is dying i mean you you name it sean connery everybody's dying so um i've been turning to games myself so because we can't yeah, like, movies yeah like you know, I, I have a good friend um, who is an attorney who does like some some really good and important work. And I've definitely had conversations with her where I've been like, hey, I feel really bad about working in the entertainment industry. Like, I don't I don't know how to feel about the fact that like I make games for a living while, you know, people are suffering, people are going through it. Um, and the thing that that she said to me was that entertainment and games especially games like these are things that help people get through this stuff like emts who are like going through it with with the pandemic like they go home and they pick up their switch and they pay animal crossing like there's there's a lot of value in in entertainment and in art like one of the things that makes humanity and humans so beautiful and special is like our capacity to create art and to create mm -hmm. art that connects us with the people around us um and and the other thing i'll say is that even if you work in the entertainment industry or you know even if the thing that you do on a day-to-day -day basis is not you know the most humanitarian thing that you can think of like you can still do stuff out of work outside of work you can have a life outside of outside of your job and in fact you should have a life outside of your job um like being able to foster kittens has has really improved my life my life significantly um the mentorship that i do in the games industry outside of my job is is extremely fulfilling um i actually i so i was a mentor in the dice which is a, a conference that happens uh, the DICE mentorship program this year and my mentee, uh, her name is Danielle and she's an artist. Uh, and she recently got a new job. And for me, like, you know, obviously that's, that's all her work. That's all her effort, but like just getting, getting to be a part of that. Yeah. It's so fulfilling. I'm sure with you, with, with Mount West as well, like, you know, the fact that you put together and are running this event, like this event is great. I'm really, really glad that it exists. Um, well, I mean, I find, <clears throat> I don't necessarily have the, I mean, I do have mentees internally, but uh, it is, it's so nice for me to have students come in who are, um, I wouldn't say frightened, but like they're, they're uh, timid. They're, uh, they have some trepidation about about their skills and then i go through the whole two-year process and and get them trained and get them having some confidence and then they get that first job and it's just like it's a bird leaving the nest to some degree it's 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 like this is all you but i'm glad i i'm glad i had a relationship with you to, to help get that out there so yeah um, i will say that like i i'm at a point in my life and my career where like i'm pretty confident doing things that like seem kind of scary um, but the first time that I, like the first time I went to the game developers conference, uh, back in 2013, like I was so terrified that I like couldn't leave my motel room for a couple minutes. Cause I was just so nervous. And I really like, before I started doing game stuff, I was like, not a person who liked to work with other people. And I always kind of hoped that like I would have a job where I could just like be a hermit and never talk to anybody. And then for some reason I was like, oh, I'm going to do video games and I'll still continue to be able to do that. And like, then I like very quickly learned that that is not how this works at all. Like, uh, teams and like working with people and getting and getting along with people is, is so important. And it's actually not something that, I was naturally good at. It was something I had to work at. Um, my natural inclination is not to like be this like super warm and fuzzy person. And it is not to like, you know, I, I used to have an attitude that was very much like, we are going to get all the work done and we're going to, we're going to stop talking about all this feelings crap and we're just going to do it. And that's how it's going to get done. And like, that is not how things work at all. Because if you neglect like the emotional and psychological aspect of the people that you work with, or just like the team that you're trying to like manage and, and get things done with, like 
they're going to burn out and they're going to fall apart um, without support either from you or from each other or anything like I have heard so many horror stories just about like places that people have worked or situations that people have been where they just were not treated like humans and I just think that's crazy not just from like a basic ethical and moral standpoint but also from a a discipline and from a you know business you know whatever perspective like if the people that work for you are not happy and fulfilled and you're asking them to do an extremely difficult job which i can't emphasize enough how hard it is to make a video game uh that's how we lose people like the average career length in games is less than five years i think it's four i think that it was four in the last gdc survey um and that's not because like everybody's saying like oh it's been four years I'm done. I'm fulfilled. No, it's because like people yeah, get it's, tired. It's people like, oh, it's been four <laughs> years. I'm done. And and more than that, and like people don't get tired doing something that they really like, where they have a good work life balance. Like they get tired because they're not being treated as a person. They're being treated as a cog in a machine. So like, mm-hmm. yeah. And and again, like that is not something that that's not a line of thought that came naturally to me. Like that's based on the experience of working with people. That's based on the experience of working on projects and having the other mindset and watching people get frustrated and angry and like not want to work with me. Like, um, like especially when you work in tech, like you can think, oh, everything's going to be you know, very logical and mathematical and everything's going to be, you know, very sort of by the book and everything's going to be like a quantitative decision. It's like, no, that's not it at all because I, I work with engineers primarily now and engineers are human beings. Yeah, it's and, a human factor. You forget about that part. Yeah, so I just like, I really hope that that one of the end results of you know, people going through quarantine and people going through this pandemic is that we value each other more and that we have empathy and care about each other more. Um, I've seen some really amazing stories come out of the last few months. And, you know, my, my friends have been there for me a lot and, and I've had the opportunity to be there for them. I would not have my career and I would not have the job that I have right now if I didn't have the friends that I have in the industry. And that's not a thing of like, oh, I was friends with this very important person. And so I got in. It's, oh, a friend of mine heard about a job that they thought sounded like something I'd be interested in and then gave me a referral. Like that friendship and, and, you know, like I said before, like people are not just going to hand you a job and you shouldn't go into relationships thinking like I'm going to, be friends with this person and then convince them that I'm good at this thing. And then they will give me a job. Like my ability to just like hand somebody a job in the industry is zero. (laughs) Mr. Ripley, you're not like trying to like assume. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I wish it worked like that sometimes because there's a lot of talented people where I'm like, Oh, it would just make sense. Like I have actually, (laughs) this is, this is, this is one of those things that has kind of come with like years of experience and like having the ability to be like, Hey, you know, I kind of know what I'm talking about. Right. Where I have recommended people to other companies (laughs) where I've been like, Hey, you don't know me, but this person is really good. And I have experience and I know they don't. So I'm just kind of trying to, trying to ease the way for them. (laughs) So Uh, I try to be really tenacious about like helping other people get jobs. And um, one thing, uh, if you go to my Twitter account at the, at the pin, the pin tweet of my Twitter account uh, right now is a link to this job hunt uh, spreadsheet that I made. So I, I use a spreadsheet to track every single job in the games industry that I've applied for since 2016 um, because I'm a producer and that's how my brain works. (laughs) Um, but it's really helpful to to have that information and to track it. So as part of like, hey, what am I going to do outside of work to like fulfill myself? I made that document 
um, just a do document that anybody can download for free. If you want to pay for it, you are welcome to. I will probably use it to buy more plastic unicorns or actually realistically more cat food. <laughs> um, but it, it's a, it's a good resource. And I like over the next like year or so, I really want to put together more stuff like that and make it like just freely available because, um, I really care about the games industry. And I, I'm, and more than that, I really care about the people in the games industry. So, and I want more people to get into the games industry. Mm -hmm. uh, so doing that kind of stuff is, is something that I'm excited to, to do more of. Well, I put your your Twitter Twitter handle there on the screen, so in case you oh, want to go out there and check that out, um, Shana, thank you so much. You are an amazing advocate for the industry. You're an amazing advocate for for people in general. Uh, that's it's great, and so I'm so happy uh, to have been able to bring you back. I only I only wish I could have set up something to where like you know Justin could have popped out of that door. <laughs> and, and well, like, you know. But, <laughs> I reached out, but you know, it's, are, it's very busy. I understand. It's we are in COVID times. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much though. Um, if everybody wants to go out there and keep track of Shana, you can go to uh, her Twitter handle that I put up there. You can go and look at that, <clears throat> that post she was talking about. And thank you so much. That's going to do it uh, for us today here on this particular session. So I hope all of you all out there uh, enjoy Shana's speech and her talk. I hope you all enjoyed the expo and uh, here's to the sixth annual uh, next year, assuming that I'm, I haven't died of stress from this one. So <laughs> thank you so much, Dana. Thank you. Have a great day, everybody. I'm so glad I got to talk to you today. Oh, oh I actually, hang on, hang on. I, I see. Oh, oh yes, actually, here you go. You'll, you'll show that. There you go. So what is that? What's happening? Those are, I think those are. Oh, they're clapping hands. Thank yeah. you, Alex. Yeah. I really appreciate yeah. that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. He said, thank you so much. So yes. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.